Hello, and welcome to another episode of Taylor Talks Comics. Um, today, we're going to talk about Asterios Polyp by David Mazzucchelli. Alright, so thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Give the video a thumbs up if you like this content. Subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below. Um, I really appreciate any sort of engagement or interaction that you can provide that way. So this is a Stereos Polyp by David Mazzucchelli. I'm going to show off the book here before I get into the story. Um, but here is the spine. It's done by Pantheon Publishing. Stereos Polyp. David Mazzucchelli, who does all the writing, artwork, and lettering and everything in this book. Um, even the design of this book and the dust jacket design was done by David Mazzucchelli. His hands are all over this thing. So here's the back with some blurbs on it. And the dust jacket is one of these, um, kind of like a band. I don't, know what the, I don't know what the formal publishing title for this kind of dust jacket is, but it doesn't cover the entire book. It only covers part of it, as you can see. Um, I guess maybe it'd be easier if I showed it off this way. So it only covers part of the book. <clears throat> so I'm going to take that off to show off the book. Here's the inner flaps. And it says right here, David Mazzucchelli has been making comics his whole life. This is his first graphic novel. This came out in 2009. Um, and then you can see a little uh, embossed imprint of Asterios Polyp, the main character here on both sides. And then we open up to the end papers. I believe the end sheets, yeah, besides being a different color on the front and back, um, are the same. <clears throat> and then we, uh, we get the character here, Asterios, in the opening title page there. And we start diving into the story. Um, so the opening story is this big lightning bolt comes down onto the city of New York. Um... Or I assume it's New York. I don't know if they ever say what city they're in. But you see it in the building here. And we're, we're getting a, a shot of Asterios. It's a messy apartment on this shot. Um, and you can see some mumbling and murmuring coming from the other room as he's watching this video. And then the lightning strike, which is an amazing aesthetic of artwork here. That it just looks so bright like it, you would imagine a, a lightning bolt. And then it catches his apartment on fire. So it's on fire, he's running, racing, trying to grab any of the any of his belongings that mean the most to him before he leaves. So he grabs his lighter, his watch, and his uh, pocket knife, which all come up later into the story. Um, and then you get people running out of the building, you get the silhouette of him, which he has a great silhouette, great cartooning there, and then the apartment's on fire. And if you look at it, Compare like the messy apartment that's not on fire to this one. It's like an exact replica. It's just on fire. And great use of color in this story. So, um, but like this is a, just a total masterclass of cartooning and comic book design and artwork and graphic design as well. Uh, David Mazzucchelli, if you don't know, is the guy that, um, the artist on Batman Year One by Frank Miller, as well as uh, Daredevil Born Again. So he dabbled in superhero comics quite a bit. Um, so the fact that he did those, which are, again, a, just a masterclass of comic book art, and he compared it to this, like it's a totally different style that he's working with. Um, and this, like the, the inking or the lack of inking in certain spots or the color choices he's making, and then the page layouts, just an incredible, incredible work and choice that he's making that... Anybody that's an aspiring cartoonist, I think, would read this and just be totally inspired to do their own kind of artwork or their own style of cartooning. Maybe some of the page layouts would do, would be um, inspiring for them as well. So you get all these two, like, uh, Asterios here. Like, within the story, it's really breaking down characters 
into their their own essence. So you see the stereos character being broken down into like polygons and all his students, he's a teacher um, in this architecture school, are broken down into different things that represent who they are. Um, and you see that that kind of motif being played out through um, out the story as well. And then, so he's a, the whole story is, Arcturus Polyps is a paper um, architect. And what that means is that he's an architect that has designed hundreds of buildings, but has never had any of his buildings made. Um, so he's like known for his design work, but has never actually had any of his buildings put down and, and made into actual buildings. And here's a funny little, like the, the story has a lot of humor and heart and um, just realistic, like heart-wrenching moments too as well. Uh, but this is like one of the more humorous moments where Asterios is just going around critiquing all of his students. And like the funniest one is like, there are just two things you need to fix here, the interior and the exterior. So there's only two things he needs to fix, but he needs to fix 100% of the design. Um, so you get moments here where he's like meeting with the students and whatnot. Uh, <clears throat> and so is, and that that's like a flashback. So that's when he's like in, in this, in the throes of his job. Obviously, we started off the story with his apartment on fire. So now we're going to go back into the moment where he's dealing with that. He's like just drenching because it's raining. He only has a few things on him. And he's sitting next to this other kind of uh, weathered soul, if you will, um, talking about how he's had it pretty rough. And the stereos is like, well, this is my, this is who I'm compared to now. He's, he's used to being like an elitist rubbing elbows with like the elite class, the one percenters in the art world, if you will. And now he's rubbing elbows with um, guys that have seen and heard a few a few things that uh, would not make sense to the stereos, if you will. Um, and just like the lettering in this book is an amazing work, like master class of lettering too, if you want to do, do different lettering styles. Like here, um, he's, this guy's asking like, you got a cigarette? And he's like, my wife made me quit. Oh, married, huh? And then like you see him thinking like, how should I answer this question? Yes, no, uh, I'm divorced. So it's like, kind of like that eight ball moment where he's like thinking about what he's going to say. So it's really cool like lettering techniques up there <clears throat> as well. Um, and then he goes and finds this mechanic shop where he, cause he's trying to find a way to make money cause he's out of work. He's out of an apartment. He has no, nothing to his name at all. And he introduces himself to this mechanic and he's like, yeah, I know a few things about cars. Let me go get some lunch and then I'll come back. And he skips out on lunch and actually just starts reading books because he's got kind of a didactic didactic memory. Um, so he's just trying to memorize everything he can about books so he can help out with this guy. So the main part of the story um, is that he's trying to rebuild his life with this new guy. He asks him if he can stay in his house and rent a place. And you see this guy talking to his wife and she's like, how could you? And she's just yelling. And here's another good lettering thing. It's like, the words are kind of like outside of the bubble. You can't really tell what she's yelling because you're hearing it from Asterios' point of view. All you can hear is just yelling and some words here and there maybe. Um, and I like at least three, 3D onomatopoeia um, lettering techniques he uses throughout this book too. <clears throat> so he uh, here's another flashback where he meets who would become his wife <clears throat> and um, their cat Noguchi who's a character in the story as well. And his wife is like his, his counterbalance to him because he is very much this cold figure who is um, kind of a jerk, if you will. He's not the nicest kind of guy. And he kind of feels like he's above everyone else. And he knows he's always got a plan. He knows exactly what's going to happen. And his wife is more heartwarming and caring and aloof um, as far as like to his logical sense of brain. Like he thinks she's aloof, but really he's the one that's aloof, I guess would make sense. But she's more heartwarming and, and caring and um, thinks about things in a more human kind of aspect. I think one of the greatest moments that depicts that um, is towards the end here. Let me see if I can find it real fast. No, I'm not going to find it, am I? Well, it's where they see like a car crash, a car crash into like a deer. And then they're both looking at it from afar. And the moment that he thinks about is how the car is wrecked. And the moment she thinks about how, is how the deer has been killed. 
I don't think we're gonna find it. I should have had this page tagged. But it was just a great like two panel depiction of these characters. Yeah, I can't find it. But that's the point of it, is that she sees like the, the deer dying and then he's like he sees it as like um well it means that this guy's car's wrecked. Um and then also here's some depictions of like fights they get into. So whenever she does start to stand up for herself and show kind of anger, he show he like breaks her down into like this sketchy look to him and he's still broken down to these polygons, like something that's logical in design, and she's kind of a more artsy, sketchy kind of design. Um and then so she asks him a question, what makes you think you're always right? And then there's like, ur, ur, and this is the one he says. So he's like thinking about saying these things. He's like, nope, that's not it. That's not it. I'm going to say this. And it actually doesn't even work out for him. So just like some really cool moments in here um, of design and artwork and choices and how to depict someone's story. And I think this was made for like um, kind of like an artsy comic, a literary comic. You think of like Chris Ware uh with like rusty brown um or like charles burns who kind of fits into the artsy kind of comic book crowd uh fanographics anything they put up really so if you're into any sort of thing like that um you, you'll definitely like this i think uh I'd also, oh here it is here's what i was trying to show however brief the collateral that role might be so she, he's looking at the car he's like man the car is wrecked the person's gonna have to deal with replacing their car and she's looking at like that deer died um, and that plays a part into earlier parts of the story because she explains that she's a vegetarian because she doesn't like animal cruelty and he doesn't understand that, <laughs> I guess. Um, but it also is a great read. Like, it's such an easy read. Like, I read this in one sitting. You can just kind of fly through this and really grasp something from it. And normally, like, I praise comics for having, like, story that, like, anytime you read it, you'll pull some more things out of the story. But this is going to be a book that you, every time you read it, you'll pull more things out of um, the artwork and the design and the layouts and that kind of thing. So it's just really just an inspiring piece of work. It's 340 some pages. So it's a really thick tome of, of comics literature. And I think it's, I think Batman year one is like one of the greatest comics ever, like the greatest superhero comics ever. And I think a lot of it has to do with David Mazzucchelli's work, but this might be his masterpiece. This is just like a true masterclass of what you can do with comics. And I love anybody that can push the comics medium um, as far as it could go and show off the cool things that only this medium can do that movies and TV can't do. Um, so Stereo's Polyp, I highly recommend this to anybody that loves good comics and especially of the art artsy kind of variety. But uh, thank you for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And comment down below with your favorite David Mazzucchelli um, comics. Um, anything that I should seek out if I'm a Mazzucchelli fan or what you thought of a stereos polyp, or anything that I missed out on, that kind of stuff. Let's keep the conversation going. I love talking comics. And uh, the best thing you do is also share my content or share my videos, my channel on your social media. It's the best way to support me, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, just a little bit of your time. And I appreciate that. So everybody have a great day, and keep reading comics.